All right, welcome to another Foundation Friday. Today we are here with Chelsea from First and Main uh, Design, and she's going to be talking to us about how interior designers and realtors can elevate one another. So Chelsea, take it away. Thank you for having me so much, Jason. Uh, my name is Chelsea Coriel, and I have been a designer for 32 years now, which seems like it went by in a blink of an eye. And I want to talk to you guys today about not just you know, most people expect me to talk about staging or trends or something to do with the look of the house. And that is not uh, what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about the relationship that a, a realtor and an interior designer can have and how it can boost both of our businesses. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit back background and reason I, I feel confident speaking on this uh, in nine, uh, 2005, I uh, ran a design studio in San Diego. My husband was in the Navy, he was a Navy pilot. And so we were stationed down there for six years. And I took a position as a, a manager running a design studio, but also a retail store. It's kind of like what I have here. It's a full furniture showroom, but the staff is interior designers, not furniture salespeople, which I have to remind them all the time. <laughs> uh, but I started in 2005. We were a brand new store, hugely successful. And you know, it came in 2008. Uh, San Diego was definitely not the place to be in 2008. And I lived in, uh, the store was in Temecula, which was in the heart of mass, massive neighborhoods that sprung up overnight. The houses were inexpensive. That was the first time we had ever uh, purchased a home where rather than saying, this is how much we make, can you look at our financials and tell us what we can afford? That was the first time they said, no, 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 no. What do you want? We will find the financial vehicle to get you there. Oh, we had no business buying a $600,000 house. Then they came with two mortgages. They were jumbo. It was, it was so much pressure on homeowners. Uh, you know, we did have clients that had three and four houses in neighborhoods. They just bought them. To, to rent them to and when that market market crash hit it was devastating and our whole industry froze what do we do no one can buy a new house no one can move no one no one's going to decorate no one has money to decorate that's frivolous we're just a, you know a luxury item so we had to get serious this was a brand new company we couldn't just sit on our laurels and, and and deal with it we had to pivot we had to get creative we had to start really thinking outside the box and how we could bring more homeowners into the store. And about that time, with all of these brand new models or, you know, the brand new neighborhoods, models were everything. Any designer that got a model home, I mean, that's just a cash cow, right? No client to complain. <laughs> you got to do your own style, whatever you want, huge budgets. And all of that dried up instantly. So. We started putting together some packages for realtors, and that's what I want to talk to you guys about today. Uh, this past weekend, I was actually, I never watched HGTV. I don't, wait, why would I watch work? I'd be like you guys watching realtor shows when you get home. And, you know, that's more work, right? So uh, I finally watched a few uh, Selling London, Selling New York, uh, more of the high-end real estate shows. And I noticed that they all have an interior designer on staff. I thought, see, this is what, <laughs> this is what I, going back to those days in, in 2008, what we realized, these partnerships were so important. It made us look good. It makes you look good. So here are a couple scenarios, things that really, really worked for us then. And we're seeing working now. Uh, and, and, and I should also say, I teach interior design. I teach new designers how to start their interior design business. I've been doing that for about 15 years. So I have an online company uh, where it's a full course. I have a podcast with like 150 episodes, something like that, for people wanting to get into the design business. But there again, I don't teach how to put together fabrics. I don't teach drapes. I don't, I teach sales. Because in both of our industries, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if, if I have great color sense. If I can't sell my ideas, if I can't convince my client 
that trust me, push the I believe button. I know what I'm talking about. This is going to match. You are going to like this. This is going to make you happy. If I can't get to that point, then I never get to see my designs come to life. So it's critical that we hone our sales skills. So thinking like that in my course, I was also pulling up some things before this talk today. And I have pages and pages uh, that are part of my bonus pack for my course. And it's realtor networking tips. It's how to find realtors in your, in your community, what to say to them, what to offer them and, and how to sell to them what you can offer. Again, it isn't just that you have this thing. It's, it's how do you talk to real estate agents and let them know I'm the person you can trust. You can come to me. I want to be on your team. All right. We're going to be partners. This isn't me throwing you under the bus and vice versa. Uh, so I was going through all of this. And it was funny to me that one of the first things was um, leave your troubles at the door before you go to a real estate, you know, a networking event because people were kind of depressed. This was back in 2008. <laughs> no, wah, wah, wah. But being positive, right mindset, right? You go to this networking event, meeting people and making friends first, always talking, always chit chat, always getting to know someone and letting them see a little bit of who you are first, right? You've got to get to that comfort level. But then it's explaining, listen, both of, of our ideal clients are similar. You guys are looking for people, and I think, and this is why I was asking for us earlier, what's the biggest dilemma you guys are facing right now? Is it low inventory? You know, this isn't like you have so many houses on the market and you have to, you know, dress a pig, put lipstick on a pig to make a house look pretty to sell it. Right now, I think you can sell almost any house. People are getting desperate. They're not doing inspections. So to me, it's more of the selling of you as a real estate agent to finding more clients and getting them to trust you that you can find a home for them. So that's that's kind of what brought me with this conversation was keeping your right mindset, being positive, being confident that you can provide a service that they really need and they want. And you know, learning to, to first start making a friend, right? It's your sales 101, making the friend um, with people and then explaining things like, uh, you know, I kind of, I know the market's scary right now and there aren't many houses, but let me tell you, if you work with me, I have an interior designer that I work with and I can always call her and have her come in. If there's any house that we know is a fixer upper, it can be very overwhelming. Don't worry. My interior designer will come over. She'll walk through with you. She'll give you some ideas. She'll tell you what's possible and what's not. And let me tell you, boy, interior designers just have this vision. They can see the whole space. They'll see it transform and they'll show you what it can look like before you actually make this huge investment. So those little uh, sales techniques, again, it's not just selling a house, but selling yourself. So that is what we started doing. So in, in California, we started reaching out to all of the builders that we could find, the small builders that we knew didn't have huge uh budgets and they weren't doing these models anymore and russ has experienced this we uh we started doing these big color texture pattern boards is what we call them in design but it's just a mood board now they call them and we would take a house that was for them it was empty clean slate for you guys in this market it would be more like it's an no amount of staging there isn't enough lipstick in the world to fix this big uh we can give the vision. So anytime I see an empty room, I can imagine, I instantly imagine what it could look like, the possibility. So for us, with this house, it was old, outdated, it was 60s or 70s, you know, imagine like orange linoleum, and it was terrible. So we drew a rendering of what I envisioned it. We picked furniture, we picked tile, we picked wood. And I actually found uh, some pictures of a project that we did in the kitchen, same exact layout. And it's beautiful, completely remodeled. And he put that in the, in the home for uh, showings and uh, open houses. But it just said, imagine the possibilities. My little logo is at the bottom with my phone number. It's wonderful. I want to get in front of home buyers you want people to be able to see past the orange linoleum. <laughs> it was these kinds of things, these kinds of relationships uh, that really kind of helped us all out of that slope. 
Some other things that we did, um, I have beautiful gift certificates and they're not, it's not a coupon. It, it's not uh, something that's, you know, you throw it away. It's a true gift certificate. They're numbered, they're signed. And we do, we have a couple different options. When you come into First in Maine, originally we offer complimentary design. And yes, technically that is supposed to be with purchase, but you know, it doesn't always work that way. And we all have enough faith in our, in our talent that if I can get into a home, I can help them. They're going to buy from me just because again, I have years of, it's the sales part. It isn't, it isn't that I'm this uh, great designer. <laughs> I've been doing 32 years. So anything you do that long is you're going to be pretty good at. Um, but if I can just get in a home, right? So that was the impetus behind the complimentary design. But the only reason I mentioned with purchase is we had uh, the Women's Council uh, of Realtors here. And one of the guests spoke up and said, oh, they're great. They'll do your entire design. And you only have to buy you know, a little end table and it's all free. I thought, that's not, that's not our business model. <laughs> that's not the intention. So I do, you know, please don't take advantage of us. But we are here to help. So uh, does someone have a question? Oh, okay. Uh, so with this gift certificates, it's a wonderful closing gift. It's something that you can talk about when you're first um, meeting with a client and say, you know, you'll also get, uh, you know, if you, if you hire me as your real estate agent, you'll also get a certificate for interior design when we're finished. Uh, so your new house, you can get a full, fresh perspective from a professional designer on how it could look. Uh, you know, there's there's sales tools for you guys. And that's just a basic. That's just our, we come in, we give you uh, a basic general idea for your floor plan, for your space, um, you know, your space patterns. You, you've, you've got a lot of unknowns because you have old furniture mixed with new furniture, potentially are there going to be construction? You know, there's, there's a lot of that unknown. So we can go in and just give peace of mind. Then there's the next tier where we will do full drawings, full 3D scale drawings, uh, a full board, a full presentation, the whole house. Um, that's longer meetings. That's more in-depth connection with your client. Uh, that's more like a typical... Uh, interior designer would do. And we have that for you guys. Uh, it's a thousand dollar value. And then we've got a $300 price. So that's a great closing gift. Uh, I see Jen Knox. Are you guys still there? <laughs> yes. Uh, yes we're okay, here. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, my screen went blank and it's uh just me talking to my blank screen. Okay. Um, so again, those are those are just some of the vehicles, right? But think about it. If you're if you're meeting with someone, you're at a barbecue and you see someone that you've just met and and you know, you're trying to get people to list their homes. You're trying to get people to, you know, entice them that, hey, the interest rates are gonna come down again. It's okay. List your house now, let's cash out, let's get that equity. You know, you can you can move on. All of these things that we offer are those little sweet. Uh, perks that you can add it. You know, it, it does sound more prestigious if you say, well, you know, I have a whole team. I've got my whole office behind me. I've got an interior designer on staff. You know, I've got this team behind us that we can work together and and sell your home quickly. And, you know, they're, they're use us. That's, that's what I want you to know. Um, use us, but don't use us, if that makes sense. Uh, and, and in exchange, please bring us your clients. You know, we will always make you look good whether it's someone buying or selling a home, let us uh, be your perk, but you can also use us to be your bad guy. Now, this is something, it doesn't happen as much anymore. I, I don't know, you guys can tell me, but we used to have to convince people to stage. Staging was kind of a new thing and it was only for these big fancy houses. And now everyone has to stage a house, right? But there's still, I'm sure, some holdouts, markets, going so hot, the house will sell, why stage it? But you also know that it needs to be cleaned up. You can't have the junk everywhere. You can't have the refrigerator covered with pictures and cards and coupons. And so 
if you ever need us to come in, if a client is sort of stubborn and not listening to you, say, well, you know, I've got an interior designer that works with us and uh, I'm going to have them come in and just give you a professional opinion. Well, you know, maybe they can do a checklist of some things to get your house market ready. Right. They'll take the news much better from us being a professional designer. And then it saves you guys from being the bad. You know, you didn't say, listen, your grandkids, you know, goofy looking, take his picture of the fridge. <laughs> Let us do that. But as a professional opinion, uh, I, I I really think that uh, the two industries, right, our two ideal clients are perfectly married together. We also get people all the time that are looking for homes, uh, people that come into the store, people that just, they're dreaming of buying a new home, so they come here first. They've already jumped the gun a little and they're looking for furniture. Uh, there, There's countless times when our ideal clients cross. So this is where I was going to, I really was curious if, what is the biggest struggle right now? Is it finding home buyers? Is it convincing people to, to move? Uh, you know, is it purely inventory? Uh, you know, what are some of the other challenges that you guys face? And it, you know, if it's not here, reach out to me, you can email me and let's start brainstorming. We've got so many different ways that we can work together. And I would love to be a part of that. Uh, is, can you, any questions or do you have any, uh, anything that's specific right now where you, you guys are struggling or what would help boost your sales or. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I have there's a lot of stuff. I mean, <clears throat> I think you, you like we always talk about the three key indicators and two of which are extremely challenging right now. That's the interest rate and the inventory. Um, and then, you know, sales activity intensity. People are buying homes at a pretty good clip. And I think they've gotten used to the interest rate, but some are not selling because of that because they don't want to. I think Russ was talking about it before um, we all we're on and I was kind of listening and I couldn't agree with you more, Russ. I mean, it's like, you're not seeing that move up in neighborhood right now. It just doesn't make sense. So. Yeah. I think um, in terms of, you know, how like we could partner with you, one thing that has really changed a lot over the last couple of years is that houses need to be um, what we call market ready. And, yes. um, they need to, like, it, it was just, just years ago, staging was still kind of a luxury, right? Yeah, and, yeah, exactly. Right. And now it's kind of a necessity. Um, and, you know, having, you know, a few bumps and bruises used to be okay. And it's kind of not anymore. And so, but it's like funny, because you're like, what are the challenges? Well, <laughs> all of them really yeah. right now, uh, yeah. but one of them is that, Resale is almost the same price as new construction today. That's never happened before, right? Yeah. So now you're competing price-wise against new construction. So, you know, how are you going to set yourself apart? And I think that's where, you know, we could use uh, somebody like you. Sure. Well, and and think about, you know, big picture. I'm sort of a, a, a macro kind of a person. I like to step back and look at the big picture. What society is doing? What are trends? Uh you know, where are young people and HGTV has never been more prevalent. I mean, look at the superstars. I mean, Joanna Gaines back in when I started, the thought of an interior designer being famous was crazy. And so I, I don't think that the thought of an older home is as scary as it used to be. I think now, especially younger people will see that as a, as an opportunity, as a challenge. Oh, I could do, you know, I could flip it. I could, you know, so, so I don't think that, that, uh, I think right now we might as well capture that, accentuate that, say, you know, sort of do that promotion where, Hey, you know, we're going to find you the ugliest house, but we've got designers that can help you, you know, give you ideas to fix it up. Uh, or, Houses that are going on the market to get more money. The the uh, the real estate agents in Lake Stevens, I know everyone knows the, the twins that do the stage and have their show. 
But that was a really interesting concept. And, and a designer friend of mine in California is doing that right now, where she goes in the house now, she looks at what the uh, projected selling price would be. And then she gives them a quote for what remodeling it before they put it on the market would cost. And then she takes a percentage of anything over that selling, you know, anything over that original estimate. Uh, you'd be surprised at how much we could do to a house for under $10,000. I mean, we could change countertops. We can change light fixtures, a fresh coat of white paint. There are things that home sellers might not understand could get them another 50,000 if they invest the 10 now. And there are so many different loan opportunities. Um, we just had a presentation here the other day about uh, through Loan Depot and where you can roll up to you know, 900,000 in to the price of the house for your remodels. And it's all run through them and they pay us directly. Um, but they were showing us houses even burned to the ground. But as long as you kept them that same footprint, you could get the loan to rebuild it all. So, so there's options like that now. Again, I think lenders are getting creative as well. Uh, so rather than worrying about, yeah, new shiny new build or old house, use that as a marketing play. Use that as we can take your ugly houses and make them spectacular. You know, those are the kind of creative things that you really, when you're desperate, you know, when you're, you're, store has just closed after you just don't you, you get desperate and build a paint a big mural um but thinking outside the box how can we capitalize on this trend right now i mean trends are like wildfire it doesn't the internet and now everyone has to do it that stupid stanley cup is a perfect example it's just a cup <laughs> why are people fighting over it but it's the frenzy so you know even even doing those little quirky things you know bring us your ugly house we'll make it beautiful um, or we'll sell it, things like that. Uh, and you know, there's always those signs, we buy ugly houses, but I mean, helping people <laughs> transform it. Uh, but we've got resources where we can, we just did an entire kitchen, uh, cabinets, countertops we do. <laughs> uh, for 25,000. So, you know, that, that was everything, bells and whistles done. So it's possible. So if people knew that, that they could do more of that, it might entice them more to put their, their house in the market where they could get so much more than they even thought. And, and you know, that's just another avenue. What else? What so else so is there a way? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Is there a way you um, would take like partial payment at escrow? That would help people. Yes. Um, well, we, you know, the, for the design services, we don't charge anything. So for the actual products, um, we pay for it up front in full too. So we couldn't take, our store couldn't take partial payment. Um, but there are definitely ways to do that. I mean, we do have financing options. We've got, you okay. know, different vehicles for that. Yeah. And again, yeah, I mean, if they could finance it and then, you know, make you whole at the end of the sale. So like you're getting payments along the way. That's, that's something that would, I think, be appealing to some of my clients who are very house rich, but yeah. very cash poor. Right. And that they want to maximize. Um, Cause we have like a market ready program, which kind of taps into the equity yeah. things like that. But I think it'd be much more compelling to see somebody like uh, of your caliber come in and really spat, like really snaz it up. Yeah. So, anyway. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we, we have our, our through synchrony financing. Um, and I think, you know, usually those, those uh, loans are, are, well, I think we've got like 25,000 is probably the biggest uh, credit limit that they've given. But again, you can do a lot with that. You know, that's light fixtures, that's countertops. Um, and sometimes that's all it needs. You know, a new backsplash. It's, so, it's so, do you have all the contractors on staff when you come in and quote and talk about the countertops? Do you coordinate all that work? We do. They're not on staff. I have a list of contractors that we work with that we trust. And trust me, I have vetted many and fired many. Uh, we always have the client directly sign contracts with the contractor since they're licensed and bonded and they're the ones that are actually in the 
the home and could potentially do damage. So, but we have a list of, of contractors that we really trust. We also have painters, we have wallpaper installers. Uh, we work with Pro Granite. They do an amazing job with countertops uh, and they template, they do all of that. And we help coordinate all of that. Uh, you know, it's, it's, that's kind of the thing we do. We're, we're very much a hand holding company. We don't just pick something for you and say, good luck. We're too controlling for that. We want to make sure it goes in right. We want to make sure that that tile is set right. We want to make sure that our design is coming to life. So we're very much, we will help you from beginning to end. The other thing that our store does that, that uh, and Russ on American Dreams, I, I was kicking myself for not mentioning this. Because that design part is really, that's that's our reward at the end of the day. When we do a room for someone or a home, we collect everything here. We inspect everything. We fix anything that needs to be touched up. We blanket wrap it. We kick the client out of the house and we bring it in as a staff, set all of the furniture exactly where it's supposed to go. And we hang the art and we accessorize. I'll dig through your cupboards if you'll let me and I'll find, you know, one time I hung a picture and I found someone's garage. And she said, oh, her dad had painted that and she had no idea she could use it. And I, I mean, I love transforming a home. So then the client comes in and we've got candles lit and fresh flowers and it's a big reveal moment like HGTV. It, it adds so much to it. Again, this isn't just, it's like you guys are just selling a house. You know, you're, you're part of someone's life, their family, their history. You're selling them their home. And that's how we feel about interior design. You know, we really want this to not just be a new sofa. We want it to be the room you're proud of the house you're proud of, you know, having your holidays in and, and that. And I, I think that comes across. I think uh, the dedication to our clients, the passion, the care, uh, the customer service, you know, that's, that's all so important right now as we're getting away from human contact. Uh, so yeah, uh, every contractor we work with has the same philosophy as us. So I, I have a specific uh, uh, need right this second. I am, um... We have a house in Bothell that uh -huh. is, uh, it's got great bones, as we say, right? All the potential in the world, half acre lot on a, a cul-de-sac, uh, 2,200 nice. square foot, right? Uh, but it, it hasn't seen an update since the, the 70s. And, um, and and it's an estate sale, so we're probably not going to have, you know, the budget to get it ready. Um but, you know, I was thinking it would be nice to get some sort of visual in there to, to yeah. show folks like, OK, like because some people can't visualize what it could look like. Right. You know, this. I mean, shoot, you, I I'm, <laughs> who am I talking to? But uh, so getting that help, uh, that would be something that would be helpful. Absolutely. All you have to do is send me the listing or send me pictures. Um, we'll go see it, take some measurements because we do a we do a full, you know, two scale floor plan so that they could see what the furniture would like, you know, how much furniture they could get. And it does, it helps them paint that picture. This is what my life would be like in this home. And then we'll do renderings. You know, I do these, I still hand sketch renderings. I love it. Um, it's therapeutic. And so we, we can give them the possibility. And usually, I mean, I like to do it. We do a little easel in the kitchen. Um, you know, we used to have little chocolates and the floral arrangement. And um, I don't think you have to go that far nowadays, but having that picture and having the tile already selected and the countertop selections there, it really does go away. I'd be happy to help. That's Where's exactly what Chelsea did for, for me, for my Maywood Hills uh, listing. And it made a huge difference. It was a house that uh, was original owner. She had smoked in it for 30 years. I mean, you walk in and that's the first thing that you sense is the, the, the smell. But it was in a great neighborhood. It was it had the great bones, and you put together this amazing easel that had all the possibilities of what it could look like, and that made a huge difference for people when they came in and they saw that and were able to visualize. I don't have to take down walls or do all these things. I could just touch up a few things and make it look like a really beautiful house. So it made wow. a big difference. And that's going to really set you apart as uh, an agent as well. You know, when all the neighbors come and see and they're like, look at that. That's pretty impressive. They got an interior designer, uh, you know, yep. setting the tone. So this is, yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool stuff. Well, I think about it for us, you know, people are wondering why we do that. And don't charge for it. Uh, I'm now getting my design talent in front of 
every person that's in the market for a home in that that price range. You know, again, we love to get them and I'd love to get the client before they get the house so we can prevent mistakes. Nothing worse than someone came in and well, I painted it all yellow when it <laughs> looks like Big Bird or oh, now we got to start from scratch. So getting us in sooner than later is always beneficial to us as well. And I don't know if you provide this for everybody, but um, you did have someone come to the open house with me to kind of talk to people as they came in, just to kind of go over like what the possibilities were. I think that was very helpful to people that came in and couldn't visualize what was going on in the house. And she was able to explain the different things that could be done to it. So. Yeah. I mean, it depends on the listing, but sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Ebony and I uh, are usually, I have time to step out for a couple hours. So especially if it's a local listing, again, it's one of those things. I mean, you know, you don't take advantage of us. We won't take advantage of you. <laughs> and uh, I think it'd be a great, great partnership. You know, we really could help each other lift our business up and sell more homes. I'm, I'm going to text my clients right now and tell them I got my interior designer uh, coming out to Excellent. check it out for them. So please do. Yeah, no, I'm that's a, exciting. I'm a big dog. Em. Let's go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I thought it was pretty crazy. Sully London and their their designer on staff. I thought, huh? Yeah, the I you never see her designs, but who knows? <laughs> oh, hey, uh, Ash, um, do you think that listing that's coming up in fall would be good for this too? It's it's uh yeah, it's I a do. good one in Lesh. I I, I want to get a hold of you, Chelsea. So um, sure. it won't be until fall, right, Ash? But um, yeah, we're gonna get the house kind of prepped it's it's literally a 1906 almost you know colonial style yeah. in Leshai and um it's a duplex actually so it's pretty separated that way it's nice but it still has that home homey vibe yeah <clears throat> but yeah it would be nice to get your, pers your it's got a lot of her in the house and we need to take her out of it and create an emotional connection with potential buyers yeah so um and it's going to be a chore <laughs> so yeah. you know, the other thing that I'm I am just newly being exposed to, uh, we are now doing uh, a lot of the models for DR Horton Homes. And uh I had hired a designer who during COVID and right before COVID did 63 models in three years. She did 23 models in three months at one point. And the level of detail that goes into those model homes. She just ordered trophies. I think they weren't soccer. It was like a spelling bee or some trophy with the kid's name. Each room has the child's name, their age, their interests. Uh, we did a walkthrough the night before the opening of this model. And they said, mm, we think this homeowner would bake bread. So we had to go out that night and find flour bins and bread cookbooks and a rolling pin. And that level of detail I had never seen before. And one of the biggest aha moments is they want a memory point in almost every room in the house. So we've been doing all of this really creative thinking about, uh, you know, crazy wall treatments and, you know, the, the paneling, putting wood up, anything to create something that's an, like a wow. So they'll say, oh, remember that house that had that cool wall that was done with wood? Or remember that house that had the so creating memory points, that was something I hadn't really thought of. I was always just thinking, you know, make the room pretty. But when you're trying to sell a home, yeah, creating something that will make that house stick in their minds. I mean, that was a big, uh, like, duh, I haven't been doing that all along. <laughs> um, she even hangs the art slightly off center in certain rooms based on, you know, the traffic pattern that people will walk through. This is the way they you know, typically instinctually will walk through a house. So she places things so that, that it's uh, best viewing position is from that path. You know, even little, those really little sort of scientific details in how to sell a home. Uh, yeah, I've been learning a lot. I'll keep, uh, keep storing I, yeah. it and use it for you what guys. What a memory moment in every room of my house. See, like, <laughs> <laughs> paint a little mural real quick yeah but it is it's 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 their sales techniques right everything's a sales technique it 
more than we <laughs> like to realize, I think. Uh, but we might as well use it. You know, people want to buy. They, do. they just don't want to be sold to. Yeah. So, it, you know, it's, it's bridging that gap and showing them how you can help them get this home of their dreams, everything they've wanted, if they just trust and uh, have faith in you and work together, it's not going to happen overnight, but you're there to help them through the process. You know, they just want peace of mind, confidence, and they'll start throwing money at at least that's my experience. Any other questions? I'd just like to mention that uh, Chelsea also has an uber talented woodworker on staff that can create custom pieces for you guys if you need a yeah. nice mantle done or a table or something like that. Um, he's, he's great with coming up with custom pieces that are designed specifically for clients. Yeah, Kevin, my husband, uh, went from Navy pilot to woodworker as a fluke. Uh, when we opened the store, he thought he was going to be my janitor. And he was so depressed, go from war hero to janitor. And we had this beautiful piece of wood. And I said, well, you're in the Navy. I know you could polish things. So sand this down, could you, and make it a charcuterie board. And it was such a hit that we sold two to Alexis, uh, for catering and then we did a mantle and then he did shelves and it has snowballed. So those live edge shelves that are so popular right now and you see them in every design uh, and the live edge mantles, he makes the most beautiful mantles. And now he's doing full blown dining tables and he's our highest reviewed designer on Google. Uh, he's working on a project right now, eight mantles for one house. It's a Medina on the water, Microsoft exec. And they're spectacular. Now they like the two mantles they've gotten so far and they want a desk, coffee table, end tables, and their bar top. So he's a little busy, but it's exciting. I mean, getting to be creative and helping people, nothing better. Yeah, and you guys, you're welcome to come in. Yeah, well, uh, I had a chance to walk through your shop there with, during that event. Uh, it's uh, uh, pretty cool, so. Um, if there is there any other questions? If not, we can let her go. It sounds like she's a pretty busy gal, but we definitely appreciate your time and everything that uh, you threw out there. And I, for one, will be uh, uh, hitting you up uh, for some of this stuff. And uh, excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Come see us. We'll give you a beer. Sit out on comfortable furniture. Relax. Uh huh. And brew fest tomorrow. Brew fest. Yeah, it's going to be big. 3,000 people, three stages, I think. Nice. Yeah, I know. Wine and beer tasting. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Uh, and please reach out with an email if you ever have questions or if you have a specific house you want an opinion on or, um, you know, there, there's there's no uh, obligation. You know, even Chelsea, what do you think we could do? You know, how much would it cost to fix this? Just give me a call. We'll figure it out. All right, Josiah, Libby. And Jan on chat said thank you very much, and we thank you. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll be getting in touch with you soon. Thank you.